Chuck. The numbers themselves pretty decent. What are you saying to investors and the analyst community this morning, Chuck? Well, first of all, good morning, Jonathan, and uh, thanks for having me on. So, look, there's there's three key things I think are important about the quarter. Number one, the strategy we li laid out three years ago is working. We had, you know, increasing momentum in our top line revenue. We had record EPS this quarter. We had record capital returns to our shareholders. So overall, it was a, a, a really solid quarter from our perspective. Secondly, the innovation that we're delivering in our portfolio with the, you know, the, this intent-based networking and this new platform, the Catalyst 9000, that is the fastest ramping product in the history of the company. Uh, the fact that our security business grew 11%, our application business grew 19%, I think that's the second big piece here that uh, gives us confidence. And then the third is the business model transition that we laid out. You know, our deferred revenue from software and subscriptions grew 29% to 5.6 billion. Uh, our, you know, our product, uh, revenue that came from recurring offers was up over 30% year over year. So we're pleased with uh, the performance. Our guide was very much in line with what the street was looking for. I think actually next quarter we're guiding for continued momentum on the top line as well as record earnings per share. So uh, we're very pleased with where we are and we're pleased with the quarter. I want to get to the share of the overall business, Chuck. I don't think anyone would dispute that these have been solid numbers from your company with you at the helm. But to get the software and services business targeting over 50 percent, I believe, of the company of total sales by 2020, how close are you to that target now, Chuck, and what do you need to do to get there? Well, I think our, our software and services combined today are in the upper 40s, so we're, we're making great progress towards getting there. I think the thing that I would point out is that, you know, when you look at what we've accomplished and the, the transition for a company like us, this is not, it's not as simple as, you know, a software company that just moves the software assets to the cloud, turns it into a subscription model, and then flips a switch. That yeah. in itself is complicated. But when you have a business, it's a combination of on-premise hardware, software, uh, it's even more complicated. And our teams are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, the innovation pipeline that we have for the future is, uh, is quite robust and we feel good. Chuck, I don't want to make too much of the intraday move because you've had a really solid year so far in terms of the stock performance. We're down about 3.5%, but the theme of Q1 seems to be, despite really great numbers, and you mentioned record EPS, but I could say that about a whole host of companies this quarter. Investors, sure. for many, the takeaway seems to be that maybe Q1 was as good as it gets. Is Q1 as good as it gets for Cisco, Chuck? Well, it was, it was actually our third quarter where our fiscal year ends in July, Jonathan. So our, we just gave guidance for our Q, Q4, which is actually better than what we just achieved in Q3. So I think that, uh, you know, we, we guided to increase momentum on a top line next quarter. Uh, and, you know, the thing that I also want to point out is people don't really understand is that in our core networking infrastructure, where we've delivered new innovation with this Catalyst 9K that I talked about earlier, we also introduced a subscription model on top of that switch, which has never been done before. And so when we, when we see the order growth that we're seeing there, it's also important to remember that 20 to 25 percent of that revenue or those orders actually gets deferred to the future. So yeah. uh, it's, uh, we're, in, we're in good shape and we're quite confident. So Chuck, just a final question about the cash pile. You and I usually go back and forth on that. I believe it's uh, $77 <laughs> billion dollars in cash now. You've announced that $25 billion cash back. What's the, str the strategy, the $25 billion buyback rather? What's the strategy with the cash load? And do you feel any political pressure, so to speak, to push that cash, not into buybacks, but into things like investment, into wages? Well, Jonathan, first of all, our cash balance today is, is much lower than the $77 billion. But uh, look, we announced that we're, go we're going to return capital to our shareholders through buybacks and dividends. We also because of the positive operating results, we have actually done some pretty aggressive salary, salary programs for our uh, employees. Uh, we're also looking at strategic M&A in that envelope. So, you know, we have a plan that we've been very clear on, and I think we're executing very well against it.